artificial intelligence is pretty much the holy grail of future technologies. There is no big company nor university which is not working on the development of artificial intelligence. Role models are often the superior performance of the biological brain, but that's also a lot of work. So a development team in Australia wants to save tedious development time and insert brain cells into computers. You may think that sounds crazy, but their first prototype is already learning faster than traditional artificial intelligences of computers. How did they even do that? This is exactly what we will talk about in this video. Biological intelligence solves exactly those problems which artificial intelligence can't. For over 800 million years, evolution has trained the biological brains of humans and animals to act in real time, detect unknown situations, and make the right decisions to survive. Every brain cell communicates through thousands of connections with other neurons. Every single one of these connections can either create new neurons, break them down, or even weaken them. This is how the brain adapts to new situations, learns at the same time from experiences, and all these without any hardware or big databases needed, because all these functions are already included in the biology of neurons. The nervous systems that developed in that way are extremely complex, but also robust, powerful and efficient at the same time. These are exactly those properties that computer scientists have wanted to recreate since the 50s. So they created artificial neural networks, where many small computers connected to each other should mimic the brain. Since it was very hard in the beginning, it would take decades until processors and memory storages were developed that had the capacity to power artificial intelligence as we know today. Even if artificial intelligence, also called deep neural networks, is changing our world rapidly, it is still no contender to our biological example and computer scientists keep working on the development. For example, reinforcement learning a learning method of humans and animals that enables AI to learn decision-making. It can learn, for example, to play a game just by playing it. On the hardware side, they work on so-called neuromorphic computing. Other than traditional GPUs, graphic processor unit, they communicate information by using small voltage spikes, exactly as neurons do it, with the expectation of making artificial neural networks faster and more efficient. Summarized, huge efforts are made to mimic the biological brain, but also hangs far behind, at least in most cases. But wait a second, why not just skip all the development work and connect a biological network into a computer? You think that sounds like crazy science fiction, don't you? But this is exactly what a company called Cortical Labs, based in Australia, is currently working on. First of all, the idea arises, of course, some questions. Are brains and computers even compatible? On one side, you have a logical computer system, made of software, hardware, and memory storage, implementing transistor technology. A computer is basically made to solve arithmetic operations. On the other side, you have an organically grown network of neurons, where no borders between hardware, software, and storage are existent. Nervous systems have developed to make complex decisions and bring them to action fast. While a computer has no problem calculating big numbers, most of us have trouble just multiplying four-digit numbers. In exchange, we can walk and talk at the same time without the need of connecting ourselves to big, gigantic supercomputers. But, in spite of the big opposites, the link between brain and machine can work. The key word is brain-machine interfaces. Brain cells communicate through so-called action potentials, in a nutshell, it's basically short voltage spikes. We can already measure these action potentials as well as trigger them by putting electrodes to the brain and applying short voltages from outside. Both input and output can be done by the same electrodes. Now, we just have to link a computer in to analyze and control the neural activity. Well, the brain-machine interface is ready for action. Although brain-machine interfaces have been researched for a long time, 
only the cochlear implant has made it to mass adoption. There are also experimental projects where test participants can control prosthesis just with their minds, a robotic arm or a leg, for example. Also, Elon Musk's Neuralink is currently working on a brain-machine interface, which of course will be able to do everything at some point. This monkey, for example, can play mind pong with it. So these are some proofs that the link between brain and machine is possible. But the team of scientists at Cortical Labs wants to integrate an isolated biological network into a computer, not the whole brain. That would be a bit of an overkill. To put it plainly, they want to integrate brain cells into a motherboard, like a graphic card. To do so, firstly, they have to put it in a small, controllable environment. And secondly, they have to make sure to adjust those brain cells into the interface of a computer. This is where multi-electrode arrays comes into play. These are circuit boards with dozens of contact points. On these boards, you can place flat preparations, like slices of brain cells, for example. During this experiment, the sensitive tissue is kept at the right temperature and applied with a nutrient solution that also contains oxygen to nourish the brain cells. With this approach, neuroscientists have discovered a lot about the functionality of neurons. The preparations described are still coming from animals, which unfortunately have to die for these experiments. But modern science already has a solution for this ethical problem. It's called pluripotent stem cells. They can either take these from animal embryos or even better from human skin so that no animal is involved in those trials anymore. With the right processing, they can make neurons out of these stem cells which can be added on the multi-electrode array and with the right electrical stimulation, they can finally control the growth of these cells. This is exactly how the Australian company Cortical Labs integrated biological brain cells into a computer. They call their invention dish brain. No, they don't serve you brains in a dish. It's only the ironic approach of the scientists. And the question remaining now is, how did Cortical Labs test and approve this system? As you already figured out, the standard to test these learning systems is the super high-end game called Pong. In order to play Pong, our mini cyborg brain needs something like a display as an output and the possibility to enter inputs, basically something like a controller. In this case, the Australian team defined a rectangular area on the board as a display, with the difference that no pixels light up, but the neurons get electrical stimulations through electrodes, and the input operates similarly. The scientists have defined an area where the neural activity is measured and determined. If the neural activity of the neurons were higher on one side, the paddle of the Pong game shifted up. If the activity were on the other side, the paddle shifted down. And as a negative feedback, they just stimulated all the neurons at the same time when they missed a ball. It was the first time in history that this was ever tested. It not only worked out, the mini cyborg even did a really good job. The network of biological brain cells began to learn Pong in just a few minutes. In the course of this, a system with human brain cells first performed worse than the system with brain cells of a mouse, but learned faster and performed better at the end. Unbelievable how both biological systems have learned Pong with lesser repetitions than AI of classical computers. Indeed, the AI was still better at playing Pong in the end. But to be fair, we have to consider that the brain computer consists of only a few hundred neurons, while the human brain, on the other hand, owns 86 billion. So there is a huge potential for scaling this system, and the final words regarding performance have not been spoken yet. The authors of this study describe these brain cells to be integrated into the game virtually, so the network has basically thought it is the paddle. But certainly a few hundred cells definitely haven't any consciousness and a concept of themselves or their position in a virtual world at all. So far the study has only been published as a preprint and that means we don't know whether the study has already been reviewed by independent experts and be published in an official journal in its current form anytime soon.
but some experts have already spoken positively to some journalists. The development of biological neural networks is certainly in its inception. A big hurdle of this technology is the big expanse to produce and operate those systems. Ultimately, the stem cells have to be cultivated and kept alive on the circuit board. So you probably won't be putting devices of biological brain cells into your pocket and listening to your Spotify playlist anytime soon. But maybe it will be possible sometime to integrate those systems into big computing servers where we can access them remotely. Or maybe they will find their use in autonomous robots like that one in Robocop. We will wait and see what the future has in store for us. However, one important question remains unanswered. How does a network even solve a concrete problem at all? A brain or a deep neural network is like a black box. You know what comes in and what comes out, but you don't know on which logical basis the problem is solved. No one can identify the decision-making of such a box, nor proof or correct it before it makes a potentially serious mistake. So do we want to leave important decisions to systems that we cannot fully understand? And at which point does a biological computer chip develop a feeling or even a consciousness? After all, these are human brain cells. And that's probably why some people may ask themselves whether it's ethical to use these mini brains for research purposes. Just imagine a brain chip like that develops a consciousness and is trapped in a computer game playing Pong until the end of its time. That would be scary. Probably that's not the case. But after a certain number of neurons, these systems could of course develop a conscious mind and feelings. So it remains an ethically critical topic. What do you think about this technology? Is it necessary to research further for mankind? Or do you think it goes a bit too far? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And if you like to support our content, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one.